Yes, absolutely. The, the, the original inspiration, in fact, comes from my own childhood. Uh, the house that I grew up in was um, something like 200 meters away from a plantation house that was a ruin. It had fallen mm -hmm. apart and it had been burned in the past. And in the community where I grew up, there was a kind of mythology that developed around, around this house. So it, it was tremendously important um, feature in, <clears throat> in the landscape, but also in the kind of landscape of my imagination as a child. It occupied my mind, and I had so many questions about it. Um, so, <clears throat> I was filled with these stories about this house and about the period. And when I returned from, from my own experience of war, I had a, 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 a total sort of um, a transformation of my perspective about the history of where I came from. Mm -hmm. So that was the real kind of inspiration. And when I looked at the way that the history was connected to, to the present as I understood it, and especially the present that I knew as a, as a, as a child, I, I wanted to find a way to really connect what, what seemed to be a huge gulf, a kind of chasm of time, but in fact, as I, as I thought about it, it occurred to me that, that one lifetime could, could connect these two periods. And if I showed, um, if I showed the beginning and the end of one life like that, then maybe I could show what has changed and what hasn't changed in the place that I come from. And so I, I conceived of this character, George, and uh, he, he's kind of the central figure for me mm -hmm. of the story. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, no, in many ways, um, uh, the, the city and the surrounding area is the main character of the yeah. book. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, there is the kind of uh, the, the, the convenience of having been born there and sort of having a context for the history and um, understanding uh, the way that, for instance, as you mentioned, the construction of the highway was uh, it was representative of the kind of uh, segregation and the way that mm. racism manifested itself. But, uh, but also it seemed to me so representative of the kinds of things that happened uh, in, in the U.S. Uh, in, a, in a larger sense. And so it, it was kind of perfect for me as a storyteller because oh, well, I have this emotional attachment to this place. I feel personally very conflicted about uh, its history, but, but, but also my affection for the place. And, uh, and, and so it was, uh, I was, I was, uh, it was necessary for me to explore it, but, but also it's, it's, it's functional as a, as a, as a lens through which to examine the broader history of the country. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, was in fact the capital of the rebelling states, of the secessionist states. Mm -hmm. And so it has this kind of ignominious history, this deep shame. Um, and I was, I wanted to explore that shame and the kind of consequences that, um, that Virginians from all backgrounds kind of carry with them, this sort of shared history uh, from different perspectives. Yeah. No, and I mean, and, and I, I do feel that um, some places in the United States are well documented artistically, yeah. but I feel like if I am able to, this is what I want to, mm -hmm. I want to bring some honesty, some, a critical eye, but also a, a kind of a, an acknowledgement of, of, of its, uh, the many facets of, of a place like that, so that someone... Um, in California or France or England can can look at this place and say, oh, maybe I understand a little bit more than I did before I read the book. Yeah. 
Of course, no, in fact, I think maybe it's, for me anyway, it's the best way, because when you write about uh, the edges uh, geographically or people who exist on the margins, mm -hmm. I think maybe the result, if you do it well, and I, I, I tried to, is you can kind of trace the outline yeah. of the thing. And the center becomes a little bit clearer, even if you're not directly addressing yourself to the center. Mm -hmm. By showing the edges and showing the borders and the boundaries, you can, you can say something about the whole. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, in, in a way, that's my approach. And that's, um, you know, these are the characters and the places that I feel sympathetic to, that I feel um, perhaps that I belong to, yeah. the kind of... Um, the outcast and the losers, and uh, I mean, maybe I'm one of them, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> so I find them interesting, you know. I find them, uh, uh, you know, a source of fascination. Yes, it's it's a way to say maybe you don't realize that you know about this, but uh, but it has a lot in common with other things that you do recognize. You know, mm -hmm. it fits into, a, you can kind of situate it within a historical chronology or sort of cultural landscape and, and um, yeah, I mean, I think this, one of the things that uh, one hopes to do as a writer is, is not only to recognize something for yourself, but also uh, to be kind of an assistant for the reader, to, not to, mm -hmm. not to, not necessarily to instruct, but also, but just to say, sort of like, yes, you know this already. I think. Mm. Can I remind you? You know. And I thought of it as, um, well, it's a kind of. Um, maybe like a chorus or something. All the voices are important, and for me it was the voices together that were important. And, um, and, no, and, and, and it's true, I think, there are different, it's a story made from different kinds of stories and told from different points of view. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I mean, I guess so. if I had to pick one, I would say, you know, it's a historical novel, um, but it's a war novel, it's a love, it's a story of love, it's a story of loss. Uh, so uh, whatever shelf someone wants to put it on, I, I don't have any objection. Yeah, for me, it... <laughs> Perhaps it's a mystery novel, but uh, the, the, the solution to the mystery is revealed early. And so, as a, you know, when I'm writing it and conceiving of it, I, I'm forced to think of uh, what's, what's the actual mystery. Maybe it's not merely the, the conclusion of the plot. Maybe there's something else that's more, mm -hmm. that's equally mysterious, but, but perhaps more important. And, and as you say, I mean, uh, with, with genre, when you're when you're a writer from the south and you're writing about this from the southern states of America and, and you're writing about this this period, that's a genre mm. of its own. So you kind of have to acknowledge in a way that you're working with and, and that I mean that that real genius has has walked this ground before you. So, yeah, it was important for me not to exactly follow that path, but to sort of make my own mm -hmm. explorations. No, that's, yeah. that's true. I mean, that's uh, one of the important aspects of the book and one of the, the real subjects that I wanted to explore and, and structurally that this kind of repetition with, um, with changing, uh, the details changing and the particulars changing, but the, the sort of um, the sense and the, uh, the history itself happening over and over again. Mm -hmm. And you see that many, maybe not many, but some of the characters sort of experience the, the same passage, you know, the same kind of journey.
the, the original title comes from a poem that I love very much by, I'm not going to pronounce correctly, Louis Aragon. Yeah. And a poem to shout in the ruins. And uh, <clears throat> the subject of the poem is not I exactly in alignment, but there's something of the spirit and the, uh, the urgency of the poem. And I think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever read. And when I was thinking of the story that I was writing, I felt emotionally that there was, they were in communication with each other. And this sort mm -hmm. of desperation and uh, um, desire and this, uh, uh, this kind of in, intense uh, viv vivaciousness. And uh, I don't know, I felt like it, it, it matched perfectly how I felt about the story and the characters, and uh, and I, I I think what happened is that uh, there's another another novel in in French that already has the title. So okay. I select a new one. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, that's the ultimate subject, is uh, yeah. discovering the power to choose, uh, the, capacity, the human capacity to, to resist determinism and fate. And uh, I think, for me, the necessity to express the willingness to act and to choose, whether, it's, uh, whether or not it's effective, so the conclusion that I reached at the end of writing this book, and, and that I, I still believe to be true, is that whether or not there's fate, whether or not there's free will, whether or not there's, there's real freedom in the world, uh, I feel like there's a moral obligation to act as though there is. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, and, and these characters, and some of the characters in the book, Nurse, for instance, is one who... I think is incredibly courageous and willing to to discover a kind of interior freedom in spite of the terrible constraints and oppression that she deals with. Somehow there's a in the indomitable spirit, right? Mm -hmm. It's just something that seems to me characteristically human that um, that I wanted to document. And the different possible consequences of, yeah. of those of exercising that choice. Well, you, I mean, you can look at uh, uh, Emily and George, and in some ways, they kind of reflect different aspects of this experience. George is is searching for a kind of fixed past, right? Yeah. He's looking yeah. for something that exists already. Mm -hmm. And Emily's maybe she doesn't approach. Um, the, the task in, in the right way, but her desire is for sort of what's possible in the future, right? Mm -hmm. So they're, they're both on journeys, they're both searching, they're both uh, have this kind of desire to, to find something that will center their existence, um, but they go in opposite directions. I don't know. I mean, the question is in some ways unresolved for me entirely, uh -huh. um, but it's really one of the most pressing questions of the book. I think the thing that, um, that, I, that I realized is that in working on the book, also in my own life, is that when you return home, you have the expectation that, uh, that it will be as you left it. Mm -hmm. right? And I, I think it's, it's rare for people to account what's changed while they've been gone. And perhaps it's even more rare for people to account the ways in which they've changed while yeah. they've been gone. Mm -hmm. and, and I think maybe that's the most important thing. So, yes, I think you can make it your home again, but it can never be as it was. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason that people have so much difficulty in homecoming and the reason why the story of homecoming is 
I mean, it's uh, one of the first stories that we, we tell each other as human beings, right? Mm. It's because it's so hard to, uh, to, to kind of come to terms with the fact that both your home and you have changed in the intervening period. And you, and you kind of want this idea that we, we protect, we desperately protect this idea of the past as being fixed. Mm -hmm. And so for me, for me, that's so, it's so compelling as a story and it's so, com you know, and it's the aspect of my life that I've, that I've thought about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, what I want it to be when I get there and then uh, the kind of tragedy and the opportunity of realizing that, well, no, it has to be different now. And, um, well, you can succeed or fail at, uh, at arriving at that kind of acceptance, you know. I think it was, I mean, for, you know, I want to make sure that there's enough space to tell all of the aspects of the story that are important to me. Mm -hmm. But um, and maybe because when I first wrote as a teenager, I wrote poetry. Yeah. I'm also interested in the process of dis distillation yeah. and compression. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and, you know, if there was anything that, in, in, as I was creating, I mean, I, I wrote many, many more words that I cut out of the story. And for me, the process was asking myself, does this feel essential? Would the story, can I still tell it if I take this part out? Yeah. And even though it's, you know, I'm covering a lot of, a lot of ground and a lot of time and a lot of characters, I felt like that was the important, the important process um, in revision was was seeing what I could I could take out so that um, so that as a reader you're getting the kind of uh, the, the the essential elements of the yeah. story, and uh, I think yeah I think it's my instinct as a writer to try to compress and distill and 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 look for the I don't know what's necessary yeah sure yeah yeah, yeah. so it's also the influence of poetry. Absolutely. Yeah. I can, it's inescapable for me. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think I will always think about uh, uh, the, 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 the transfixing image and the line, rather than <clears throat> kind of big narrative art. Yeah. I mean, I think about that, but, but, uh, but I, think I, I think first as a, as a poet. Yes, especially with regard to history, <clears throat> but also in relationships and, uh, I mean, uh, one of the subjects of the book is the, the danger of self-deception. Yeah. More than lying to other people, it's about lying to yourself mm -hmm. and how dangerous that is and, and the terrible consequences that can have for the people around you. Because self-deception causes a person to act in in, well, it can be really horrifying if you, <clears throat> history is, as, you, as the saying goes, history is t told by the winners, right? Mm -hmm. And George, there's, it's a short little line, but George, George mentions that he's in a way skeptical of history. And so uh, I am too, not, that, that, uh, not there, that there aren't facts that we can know, I think there, of course there are, but we have to account for who's telling us why are they telling us? Mm -hmm. Do they have something to gain or something to hide in the way that they tell us the story of, of, uh, of what's happened? So, yeah, it's absolutely important uh, to the book. And, and, uh, and, uh, and the heroes of the story, for me, are, are the people who can be honest. You mm -hmm. know? I don't know if it's higher truth, but it, it to me it it can it's complementary to yeah. 
And it's a way of discovering for yourself, uh, for, for, I think for the, for the writer, but also when I read fiction, I feel like I'm discovering something for myself. And I'm, I'm, uh, it's also the scale of it that, that's different. Uh, of course, you know, now we're in a period where you can find uh, diaries, the first person accounts that, that are kind of in the historical record, but to imagine life as it would have been lived and, and to be able to occupy the kind of interior space of, of, of a person is very difficult in a, in, a, in a work of history or nonfiction. I mean, it's, fiction is the one advantage that it has over really all other art forms is that it allows you to access the interior life of another human being. I mean, you can't really do that with, with anything else. And so what I'm interested in as a writer and I think as a reader is this kind of, um, this, um, this desire for empathy, this desire to, to, to understand, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's hard to say and I'm not saying it well, but um, it's a kind of to understand the individual's experience in history. And so the context is there, and it's certainly important, but, you know, as they say, like, I want to walk in those shoes, you know, and fiction allows you to do that. This is, well, that's true, and it's, and it's, um... It's uh, discreet. It's compartmentalized. Yeah, that's important. Uh, it's absolutely important. Yeah, no, and I think what what you can do as a as a as a writer of fiction is you can you can connect those those little pieces, the fragments. Mm -hmm. You can compare them to each other. You can show what they reveal and what they leave out. You can show somebody reading the newspaper who thinks it's ridiculous, yeah. who knows it's ridiculous, who can sort of have these interior thoughts about who, who, who can throw it in the garbage can. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, 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 it's the possibility of commenting on, I guess in a way it's meta-commentary, it's the, the ability to say, yes, we even if we're told the truth, we're not told the whole truth, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and... Uh, yeah, I think for me, all of that, the archives, as you say, the record, the, the, the history, it's all necessary. Mm -hmm. And um, especially when examining the past, it would be impossible to do it without, without that, that work that's been done before. Um, but for me, it's also essential to have uh, you know, the role of the, the novelist or poet as kind of interpreter. Uh, and we don't have to... We don't have to get it right, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we kind of, we have a different obligation, but we don't have to get the same thing right mm -hmm. as, as the historian or the journalist. We're trying to get something right, but it doesn't have to be the same thing that they want to, that they want to get right. So, yeah, I feel like they're complementary and, and uh, you know, there's a in, a, in a way there's a duty to examine or re-examine. Yeah. Uh, those archives to yeah. reevaluate and reassess. Yeah, I mean, obviously, one of the reasons that I wanted to write the book was to examine my own sort of relationship to that legacy, that that inheritance, and um, some of the characters in the book have a have a very clear and direct connection to their own past and to their mm -hmm. own history and, and to their own. Legacy and, and and for some characters like George, uh, it's it's completely obscured. They, they, in a way, they're they're sort of the, the source of their discontentment is the fact that they're alienated from their own history. And then you have um, like like Lottie and Billy, who the, you know for them the connection to the history is clear as a, to the reader, but 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 not necessarily to them. And so. Having these different relationships to history and, and 
asking in what ways does that affect the kind of res responsibility that we have to each other when we share this history especially uh, was, was really interesting to me. But also it goes back to this idea of, of fate and determinism, mm -hmm. you know. If we have this history, does that mean that, that we will have this future? Uh, uh, I, I think in some cases, well, it's a powerful, it's a powerful influence, but, um, but I suppose I don't want to believe that it's irresistible, you know. Uh, otherwise, we will mm -hmm. just repeat again the cycle. Um, so it's a, a, yeah, for me, a tremendously important question about our relationship to the past. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and and it, 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 it as you say, it's not exactly a frame, but it's a, it's a, it's a way to. I find these boundaries um, that we create between, let's just say, nature and civilization. Mm -hmm. One, they're they're permeable. They're not they're not hard boundaries. They're not fixed, and really, they're kind of a construct of of. Of, of the, the human mind and, and so <clears throat> there's a sort of idea that um, well if we build a house or a city we'll free ourselves from from uh, chaos and, uh, and violence and, uh, and uncertainty and, and, and no we are always a part of it we are as much a part of nature as uh, as the fields and the swamps and the, you know, we, 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 we can't, there's this sort of delusion that we, we can separate ourselves from it. But no, it, it, it goes on and, mm -hmm. and, it, and it includes us in its, in its same processes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and um, one of the interesting things about the period and, and it, 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 it's, well, there's, there's, there's like historical, causal relationship, but, but I think of that period just after the Civil War, at least the United States, as being the kind of the beginning of, um, of, of the real flowering of uh, industrialized capitalism in the U.S. And so in a way, the consequence that that has on the natural world, it's kind of tied in with this desire to well, we mourn for this. We we mourn for the fact that we're alienated from nature, mm -hmm. but also we see it as a kind of necessity to feel safe. So mm -hmm. there's this kind of contradiction within, within um, the human the human mind, and, and hey, we can say the soul even that uh, we feel this loss deeply. Absolutely, it was really important to me to have presence of nature and the kind of uh, the continuity of the kinds of things that happen, the violence that exists um, uh, in the swamps, maybe is in slightly different form than the kind of violence that exists on the battlefield or in the factories or in the markets, but, um, you know, but in some ways they're inseparable. Well, this is uh, when I spoke about the the real plantation house that uh, that inspired the story. Mm -hmm. The man was a uh, the man who owned it, and, and the story, as I said, it entered the mythology. He was a uh, French Huguenot, uh, which was very common in Virginia. Yeah. So there, there was a, a lot of people with French ancestry who came to Virginia, and so. It was real. It's historical. Yeah, it was historical, <laughs> but also, no, in a way, I, uh, I wasn't trying to single out uh, the French in any way. But, of course. Uh, but um, but it, it was interesting to me as a way of kind of demonstrating that, uh, well, this was an international system, in fact. In the United States, people, people have a very strong desire to, to say, oh, well, this is just something that happened in the South. Yeah. And so for me, I wanted to say, well, it's true it happened in the South, but also people in uh, Ohio benefited from that system, and people in New York benefited from that system. 
and people in Portugal benefited from that system, and also people in in Nantes who built ships that the slaves traveled on benefited benefited from that system. So it's an international system, and uh, yeah. So I had the basis for um, the historical figure who was who was French, and and in exploring oh, what kind of background would he have, where would, where could he have come from. You know, I discovered the history of, of Nantes and the, the shipbuilding and, and uh, the commercial uh, ventures that uh, are fa famous for building mm. the ships. And, uh, and uh, so, I, in a way, it's just the kind of way that one thing leads to another as you're, as you're creating characters and exploring. Yeah, but them. you say Hugo, and it's also a reference to the fact uh, we had a civil war in France. Of course. A religious war. Of course. Yeah. And they were, they were exiled, and uh, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, again, it's a yeah. pattern that goes on. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. for me, that's everything, and and you know, as I mentioned before, it's it's the one thing that fiction can do that maybe other forms of writing mm -hmm. or, you know, or filmmaking or music or whatever, they, they, they uh, that's what fiction is good at doing, is communicating experience. And, uh, and it's been something that I've thought a lot about. Mm -hmm. Because I love history. I'm, I'm deeply fascinated by it. And, 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 and very I'll read a, a work of history as often as I'll read a novel or a book of poetry. And, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm so grateful for the people who dedicate themselves to that work. Mm -hmm. But for me, I always feel like ah, there's something more I want to know. I wish I could talk to someone who was a farmer or, or mm -hmm. you know, a soldier or whatever the case may be. And, uh, and with a novel, you can't. Shane is the kind of idea of the, it's, a, it's such an emblematic American story and, mm -hmm. and uh, to me it's a kind of um, an interesting reversal of uh, the good guy and the bad guy. Maybe you're the stranger who comes to town or maybe you're, you're watching the hero go on the journey. It's all about a matter of perspective and all those stories are connected to each other, one by who's doing the telling and to whom the story is being told. And so, yeah, I think in a, in a way the book is, is an effort to kind of, um, to do both of those things, but maybe really it's, it's, it's just trying to tell one version of the same story that we're always trying to tell, you know.